computing power that we wouldn't think was possible like I think half a decade ago. Uh, I think everybody knows about that. Um, and uh, these sophisticated self-learning algorithms coupled with these two things gives us machine learning. Uh, okay, so I want to narrow down our subject from machine learning to machine learning on mobile because that's what uh, we are interested in right now. Uh, typically, machine learning on mobile uses pre-trained models. Uh, yes, uh, on core ML3, uh, it is possible to train a model on device, but uh, uh, you still need some sort of pre-trained model in there. Um, and uh, along with machine learning on mobile, you get security and speed. This is because uh, your data never leaves the device. So uh, things like images and stuff, user wants it to be secure and not to send it over the wire. So when you do machine learning on mobile, your data will never leave the device. It's more secure and it is fast because uh, no API calls, right? So it is more seamless experience. All right, uh, let's just get this out of the way. Uh, you do not need to be a machine learning expert who understands artificial neural networks, all the complicated algorithms to develop apps on uh, using CoreML today. Uh, of course, if you if it interests you, you can dive deeper, understand more, teach me a little bit about it, and uh, you can it will definitely add some value. But uh, the point of this is it is optional. Uh, you do not need to understand all these complex algorithms to uh, use CoreML on iOS today. All right, uh, so machine learning is easy. Uh, how do I use it in, your, in my app? Um, uh, another point I want to make is uh, you do not need to come up with a new idea of an app to, to use machine learning. You can already do it in your existing apps. How do you ask? Uh, let's, take exam uh, let's take the inspiration from uh, Apple's default apps. Uh, first app I'm showing here is uh, Photos. So uh, obviously the main feature of Photos uh, is to show the photos that you've previously taken using the camera. But uh, it doesn't stop there. Uh, what the Photos app does is it uses classification technique and it will categorize all your photos into different categories. Uh, it doesn't only uh, so it doesn't uh, work like only dogs, cats, and people. It will also differentiate your photos according to the setting, like photos taken at the beach or photos taken at a restaurant. So I think that's uh, that's a very classic example of how Photos app is using machine learning. Uh, next one is my favorite. It's the keyboard app. So what it does is it will optimize the touch area based on how you type each letter. Uh, this is the reason why uh, when you type on your friend's phone you can't really get it right, because uh, every phone optimizes the keyboard for its user. I think this is uh, a very uh, perfect example of how little enhancements can significantly impact users uh, using machine learning. All right, uh, so I want to introduce a new app to you guys. Uh, let's say we are building uh, an app for Singapore Zoo. So um, I thought that we will have a new feature where if people take pictures in the zoo, we can classify the image and find uh, the species of that animal, species and type, basically. So let's look at the steps on how we can achieve that. So I've got four steps for you. Uh, first one is finding a core ML model. So uh, uh, let's go into each of the steps later. Next one is importing the model into your app. Uh, executing, uh, yeah, the, uh, taking the input from the user and executing it in the request and handling the result. How do you find the model? Uh, you can use tons of open source uh, models available online, but uh, basically you need to, uh, you have two things to keep in mind. Uh, first one is uh, the required model should be in .ml model format. That's the one that core ML needs. Uh, another one is uh, you should you need to understand the inputs and outputs of the model. Uh, for example, if your input is going to be an image, uh, does the uh, what format does the model take? Uh, is it very easy to change that format from a UI image to this one? Uh, you also need to consider the outputs like uh, what format is it? Uh, how can you use it in your use case and stuff like that? Okay. Uh, quick mention of for core ML tools. So uh, of course there are tons of rich models available by other platforms. Uh, you must have heard uh, about TensorFlow by Google. 
So you can take advantage of these models and convert it into code ML. Um, there are Python utilities which are called code ML tools and Apple uh, is the one who invested in them. So basically Apple is themselves are giving this uh, utility for you to use other, other models uh, on iOS platforms. All right. So once you have the model, uh, you want to initialize it. Um, uh, this code is pretty standard. It's just basically copy and paste this most of the times. Two things are happening here. Uh, we're creating a request uh, with uh, the model that we, uh, we want to use. And uh, we are supplying it a completion handler. Uh, this completion handler is called when uh, the request is done processing. So, uh, notice that here we are still not executing the request. This is just the initialization part. Uh, this is how you run the request. Again, very standard piece of code. Uh, you need to provide the orientation because if you mess the orientation, it's not going to able. It's not going to be able to detect what it is if the image is like flipped out or something like that. Um, so in this case, I'm providing an array of requests. Uh, of course, we just have one request that we created in the previous step, so we're sending that. Um, notice that the input type is CI image. Uh, CI image uh, is, uh, uh, it is from the core, Im core image framework of uh, Apple. So uh, it's very easy to convert a UI image to CI image, so we are good. Uh, next one is handling the output. So uh, after this request is successful, uh, it will call the handler that we passed it in the first step. Uh, this is uh, the completion handler. It, it can be called on success and failure both. Uh, it's uh, first thing it's checking if it was able to classify the image. Uh, that's uh, so basically if that's the case, then we have results uh, in the request, and uh, it gives you an array of uh, classification observation object. Uh, this is a very generic uh, response on any classification. It basically just tells you what it has. Classify uh, what it has found in the image, and it will give you some sort of confidence on how uh, how confident the model is on on that uh, uh, classification. All right. So now that we have this, let's try to uh, build out our zoo app. Bring up my Xcode. Uh, Okay, so I have already done the basic things. Uh, let me run this app and show, show it to you. Okay, so uh, when you have this zoo app, uh, you basically need to uh, need some sort of an uploader. You pick an image and then it's going to classify it. So I've already uh, added the the upload functionality. So I'm going to choose something, and it just says processing. Is it cutting off? Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. Cool. So uh, it, right now it just is processing because there's no machine learning yet. Uh, so what did we learn? So the step one was finding a model, right? So let's go and find a model. So for us it was pretty easy. We just went to Apple's website and they have featured some of the models. And I decided to use this one. Uh, it says uh, the architecture is trained to classify dominant objects in a camera frame or an image. And I've been told that it is trained with lots of images of animals, so I think this should suit our purpose. Uh, I've already downloaded it. I'm just going to drag and drop it here. The font is super tiny. Can you guys see? It's hard for me to see. 
Okay. Uh, so importing is easy using drag and drop. All right. Uh, so when you click on the model, uh, what do you see? It shows you uh, the inputs, outputs, and uh, the, it automatically creates a class. Uh, the class is the same name as the file, so it has a it uh, it will create a class with the name of that model. Uh, you basically do not need anything else than this name uh, mostly. Uh, it tells you the inputs and outputs. The input is image and the output is a class label, so it's perfect. We just need the label of what it has identified and we should be done. Uh, all right, so uh, let me show you a little bit about uh, how the app is working. Uh, I'm using Swift UI, uh, because why not? Um, uh, it, we have uh, multiple views. The first one, which says processing, is detection result, uh, the text, uh, box and we have the image where we display the image. I should show this first. Yeah, uh, and uh, there's an upload button and the image picker, of course. So the one that we need to focus on right now is uh, the image process, uh, uh, the image picker. So whenever you pick an image, what it does is it will call image processor or process image. Let's go to this method. So, uh, of course, this one is empty because there's no machine learning yet. Uh, let me try, let's try and uh, try to do those steps we discussed earlier. So, if you remember, step one was about initializing the model. Um, this is what it is. Uh, again, we're going to, oh, wait, oh, I forgot to import stuff. Uh, let's import vision and code ML. Okay. So uh, what this does is it is creating a core ML model and uh, sorry, uh, it is creating a core ML request and sending your model in. Uh, so this is the model that we just imported, mobile net v2. Uh, this is the only place where you need to specify the model. Uh, this is particularly easy when you're switching models. Uh, it will work flawlessly. You just need to switch this file that you're using. Uh, and this request has a completion handler, and uh, that's all for now. Uh, let's move on to step two, where we perform the request. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so we don't need this anymore. So step one is where the user will upload the image and you need to uh, process it. Um, in the step two, uh, we are converting our UI image to a CI image uh, from core image framework, uh, creating a request and just performing it. Uh, pretty standard code, nothing else going on. All right, uh, next step, what happens once this request is successful? Uh, is not successful, is complete. Move on to step three. Uh, yeah, so let's focus here. Uh, I have two var statements uh, to handle two different errors. So two problems can happen. Either it is not able to classify, uh, there is some error in the classification, or it was able to classify, but it did not detect anything. This is the reason I have two guard statements. Uh, first one is checking uh, if the results are present, uh, and the next one is checking if the results are empty. Okay, once we go through the guard statements, uh, the next step is for us to look at the output. Uh, as I discussed before, uh, it is going to be uh, the end classification observation. Uh, this guy has an identifier, so this it says uh, this is the label or identifier of the classification request. So this is exactly what we need. Let's just print this out for now and run the app and see what happens. So this is going to, uh, okay, let's just print the confidence as well along with this so that we can see both the things. So the confidence is uh, first object dot confidence. Ignore the force and drag. This is just a print statement. Okay. Let's try the theta. So it printed. Hopefully you can see. 
So it printed. Uh, didn't print anything. Interesting. Oh, because I have commented the completion. All right, let's try again. So it prints cheetah and the confidence is 0.86 which means 86%. So well it works. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is uh, process the results. Uh, by that I mean uh, I'm going to print out first two detections. So uh, what exactly this model is giving us? It's giving us a list of predictions uh, and it is all sorted based on how much confidence it has on each of the prediction. And the for, uh, uh, so the first one is obviously the most confident one. Uh, you can do many things here. So typically what you can do is you can have a threshold level of confidence. Like I only want to show the output to the user uh, with 50, uh, more than 50% of confidence so that you don't see uh, show any junk to the user and if the model is not confident enough. Uh, I'm not worried about that. So I'm just going to print out first two detections here and see what happens. Uh, so this is pretty straightforward. It is taking first and second elements and uh, it's creating a string out of uh, the detections. Uh, pretty straightforward implementation. Uh, I'm uh, formatting the identifier and the con confidence in percentages. Let's try this guy. Uh, this image was actually taken in the Singapore Zoo. So it says it's an ice bear, polar bear, blah, 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 97%. <laughs> so that is pretty cool. Uh, it also says it could be a brown bear and it has 0.4% of confidence. So you see what I mean. Uh, usually you want to only show values to the user where, where the model is more confident. Uh, I'm going to try it out with uh, different animals now. Okay, golden retriever seems about right. Ah, this is the rabbit, yes. Hair, okay. So interesting fact, uh, hair uh, and rabbit. Uh, so hair generally have longer ears than rabbit. So you can see this guy has long ears. And the other one is a rabbit, so it has like smaller ones. We have another one, yeah. This looks like a hair as well. So uh, this is actually not a real dog, and it is able to identify that it is indeed a teddy bear. So that is quite impressive in my opinion. This guy, comic book. This model was not trained to identify comic book characters, so well. Let's try with... I don't really know a lot about cats, so can't tell. So it's very tricky to uh, make out the difference between dogs and fox for a model. So let's try with this guy, uh, red fox, seems about right as well. So I'm pretty happy with how the model works. I just want to uh, uh, look at a few things uh, and correct a few things in our processor. So what exactly is happening here is we are running everything on main thread. Uh, as you guys know, uh, machine learning models might take longer time to process, so it is not advised to work on main thread. Uh, one of the other apps I was working on, uh, when you pick an image, it stays on the image picker for seconds. That is exactly not a good experience. So because our model is pretty fast, it is going down uh, quickly. So for that, what you can do is go to this process image and run this on background. Was user initiated? So let's ignore the indentation and oh wait. So this is wrong because there is a UI update happening right here. So this object detection result guy is interesting. This is the one that I'm publishing on the UI. So that needs to happen on main thread. Uh, and yes, we still have that problem in Swift UI. So let's fix that. 
So of course we used Core ML, uh, but why did we use Vision Framework? Uh, uh, as you can see, it sits right on top of Core ML. Uh, so how you, uh, how I think about it is, it's like a pipeline for us from your app to uh, Core ML. It does all the heavy lifting sorts of things, like it converts your image to image buffer. So image buffer, by the way, is the ideal type which Core ML consumes and uh, and uh, expects for you to send if you want to uh, operate on images. But you don't have to think about it anymore. You just send in an image and Vision will take care of everything. As you guys saw, it also sent us like a very uh, genetic response type. It was called BM classification observation. Um, this is a pretty generic class where it tells you about the results of, of its classification models. Uh, it also has similar ones for feature detection and stuff like that. So uh, even uh, getting outputs from model was hard before this, but vision makes everything easier. It also performs phase uh, and landmark detection, uh, barcode recognition, etc. Uh, all of this is out of the box. You don't even need like, machine learning models for this stuff. All right. So to end this talk, I want to leave you guys with this. Uh, it, uh, machine learning has become so easy on mobile nowadays that soon it's going to be a norm and people are going to expect all of these things from your apps uh, by default. And um, I think we should just uh, uh, solve interesting problems, have fun, and who knows, you might just find like a huge gap and disrupt the industry. Thank you. Thank you, Prana, for the talk. Does anyone have any questions for her? Okay, um, if you have any questions for her, you can find her later at the end of this session. Yeah, you can contact me on Twitter as well. Okay, thank you so thank much. You.